What is up, Kingsman? Welcome back to another Napoleon Total War 3 battle. This will mark my 200th video on YouTube. So today, I have something a little different. I am going to be covering a battle, but I'm not going to be doing the normal things of the battle. Um, today, I'm covering two regiments from the 4th Line Infantry, the Impetuous. Now, there's a total of four of them, but uh, two are in this battle, and I'm going to be covering two of these, particularly this one, because as you can see, I'm in slow motion here. We have a young officer, a young colonel, I believe, who's in charge. Now he's going to be with their brother in arms. Now, a little bit as they're marching about this regiment, um, it was formed in 1776 and um, actually had Joseph Bonaparte as a general, as a colonel at one point, until, of course, he got promoted to general. Um, and they served in several battles. Now, this is the Battle of Bernardino. Um, historically, they were not in this battle. Um, the battles that they were in, I believe, were such as Arkol, Austerlitz, um, some campaigns, if I can remember them. Uh, I know they had some ba uh, battle honors at Arkol in Hohenlinden in Wagram. Well, Graham, you can tell I'm reading these off, can't you? Um, but they were in Dresden, Leipzig, you know, Smolsk. And uh, today they are in Bornadio. Now they are being ordered to advance. They have some cavalry guard decors, as well as some grenadiers um, with them as well. And as you can see, there's actually three of them. Three of the impetuous line. Actually, four. Okay, so all of the four, my bad, all the four E. <laughs> regiments are here and uh, they are prepared to break the Russians who they're against and look at this young young guy here he it's probably his first battle as young as he is and he will die with honor or win so as you can see the <laughs> the battlefield they are marching through is going to be wooded of course for now and they're going to be taking down this road. Going, Their orders are to take this town. As you can see in the distance, their orders are to take the town. They have some cavalry supporting them, Sir Dragoons. And uh, they have not seen the Russians yet. They have not heard any gunfire. And actually really fast because the sound always cuts out. Um, there we go. We will hear gunfire if it does. Uh, no cannons firing yet. And they are going to march down this road to the beat of the drums. Who will stop this force? unbeatable that's what they are right now they're unbeatable and i'm trying to find this officer again where is he well he's in here somewhere there he is right here so they're going to start striding this road he is going to be the first the first to go down this road he is eager to fight to prove himself to his superiors to his men um this is a very battle hardened regiment all these regiments were they were uh said they were in a lot of battles got some honors in some of the battles so they did an excellent job of fighting as you can see now we're starting to see some russian cav way in the distance as they're marching this road hope they're hoping that the russian russian cav takes care of is taken care of by their dragoons they do not want to lose i have to form square even though they can form square so they're gonna hope it looks like the dragoons are scaring off these uh russian cavalry and uh, I believe they have some artillery also coming down the road here. Way back here. And the Garde du Corps also trying to escort them. Now they're, looks like they're trying to take a break, let some other units maybe catch up. They're not going to take the road anymore. And uh, they are going to take this town for Napoleon himself. Although this is Ney that they're under. They're under the command of Ney. I wish you could insert like you can some of the other ones. It'd be beautiful to be able to. So they are going to continue marching. They have a massive wood in the way, but they can they can tell if they look from their position that there is massive amount of troops moving. They haven't heard any gunfire yet. I believe I have. There's more fourth. No, there's some Voltigeurs. The Imperial Guard are over there. Now you're starting to see some flashes. Not hearing any gunfire yet. But they're starting to see a little bit of smoke as well. And now you're hearing it. You can start hearing the roll of musket fire.
but they have very clear orders to take this village. And that's exactly what they're going to do. And they actually have very fast movement. But as you can hear, fire, you see the flash of muskets. And the calves sitting back, waiting. And uh, this army is still marching. We have 93rd line as well, joining these brave souls as they try to take this town. Or they don't try, they will take it. Cab moving across. And I'm not zooming out, guys. That's usually something I enjoy doing in these battles. But like I said, this is a little bit of a different battle. You know, we, we got to stay at the regiment's, the regiment's uh, point of view. And it looks like we have some 4th uh, line infantry now starting to move out a little bit. Forming up. Where's the officer? There he is. He's going to continue to advance along this road, possibly. Nope, they're going to form up as they may be needed in the front. As you can see, there's smoke. And they can hear the roll of mus the the rolling musket fire. And they've been ordered to go around this town. As they can see, some of the other units are going to advance. Actually, Louis Gengolt, Genolt, I'm sure that's how it would be said, is advancing towards the town. They are ordered to go around this small Russian village. They got some more French dragoons scouting out ahead, ensuring that they uh, aren't going to get ambushed by Russian lancers as they are prone to uh, hide the trees and are very good at hiding. As they would say, the peasants hide. And now... The Grenadiers behind them, they are going to start swinging around using a column formation. And they still don't know what they're about to face, guys. The suspense is killing me. No, I'm just kidding. I played this battle, actually. This is my... I was nay in this battle. I know the outcome, and I chose my own units because I know what they did. So I know the orders they were given. So, you know, for realism's sake. Look at all these small villages. These small little villages that they're, like, I mean, that's barely enough for one man. Oh dear. It's not even floor. Oh, and Napoleon can help free them from their peasant life. So they're hearing the roll of musket fire. If you they peek, they can see that there's some shooting happening right here. And they are ready to get into it. They're, the excitement is building. And, uh, he is the first, but like I said, the other one, other officer, me, I think is a lot of it, a little bit more uh, veteran. He looks like he's seen a couple battles himself. There he is. Yeah, he's got the mustache. This guy's all clean shaven because he can't grow anything yet. His father probably paid for his commission. And men are running. Ignore that. And they come out. Nope, still nothing. They still don't see anything. They just see, if they glimpse through the buildings, they just see line infantry firing as they march past. They don't even know what they're fighting. And then they walk out in the smoke, the Russian infantry up on the hill, and they realize they have to deal with this. But they are the impetuous Lion infantry. They can do it. And he gives the order. They've been given the orders to attack, and this young officer... Name him uh, Francis. Let's name him Francis. I should have done that before. <laughs> it makes it a little easier. Oh, man, Francis is now ordering his men to form up in a line of battle. And uh, I hope this game doesn't start to lag because I'm so close. Usually that happens when you start zooming in. Francis is ordering his men into a line of battle. And uh, they are advancing some cavalry. The guard decor. Grenadier Cheval, my bad. Are uh, moving out of the way. They're moving through the horses. <laughs> like, excuse me, excuse me. And there are the Russians. Now, they are about to push the Russian flank. But as you can see, more Russians now forming up to meet them. They must push on this flank and help the center. Which is, oh gosh. Which is being uh, pushed very hard. No men have died yet. Francis is... Oh, they haven't even started firing yet, but some of them have, apparently. Francis is like, get ready, man, here we go. Don't know why I also gave a weird accent, but... 
Here we go, and now they've been ordered to start pouring in the volleys. <clears throat> and so, he gives the order. Sir! Sir! Our general is under attack! <clears throat> Francis, you're making me look bad. Gives an order to fire. And so they fire a volley into the men, and it is their first volley in this combat. The bullets are starting to fly towards them. I swear, if he dies right off the bat... I'll still follow this regiment because they're not going to avenge his death. They're pouring volleys and they are being ordered to advance now. Going straight for the Russians. Getting very, very close. They have some more... Actually, it looks like some Cav, some Lancers rushed in and now they are going to have their turn. They're being ordered to close in with the enemy and that's exactly what they're going to do. Doing a bayonet charge, I would hope. It's a it's a square, so yep. He's been ordered to give a bayonet charge, and he rushes in. Francis is rushing in. Let's not lose him in the thick of battle. Where is he? Let's see if he will kill anyone. Oh dang it! Where is he, Francis? <laughs> there he is. He's right here, and he's ordering his men forward. He's yelling forward, man! No! Falling back. He's in the thick of it. He's in the thick of it. But his men are slaughtering these Russian line infantry. And his men prove themselves very successfully. So now he will order them forward as there is more fighting happening over here. And they're going to start pouring in some volleys. He rushes to the front so he can see what's happening here. And they start pouring in the volleys. He gets out a pistol and fires it. Oh, that's awesome. Here we go. Oh, there we go. Good job, Francis. Doing his part. And now it looks like he's actually going to advance with his men, possibly. Oh, no. They're going to fire some volleys. Push back the Russians. And so far, they have succeeded. But the problem is this cavalry from France is getting flanked. And they're getting flanked. As you can see, some light infantry from Russia are now pushing up so now they're gonna reform some cuirassiers are moving past them maybe try to engage the enemy and it has become just a massive mosh pit of who knows what some looks like some men actually broke and the impetuous are gonna fall back francis is still alive maybe he killed someone with this pistol because that's how we fighting i think he did so they are falling back a little bit. Maybe they should have pushed up and attacked. But they're falling back. The other regiment still has their general. Or their colonel. He's over here. They're both very strong still. As you can see some more Russians have broken or are fleeing. This regiment lost a lot of men and is fleeing as well. But they're going to hopefully form up here and actually advance to the attack on these Russians there. Do not leave their cab unsupported. What a glorious advance. I swear, if he dies right here, I would be very sad. Francis has to live. He has to win this battle. For France. Francis, France. Get it? So they're going to be starting to pour the volleys in as this is a small Russian... Uh, detachment he looks a little bored actually no now they're going to advance looks like once again advancing with the massive line he is the end of this line he cannot hold if he breaks if his regiment breaks they could cause the whole battle line to break now he's ordering his men to fire once again the flag bearer stay with his officer Looks like they lost the drummer. Yeah, he's going to fire another volley. That's right, Francis. Fi okay, don't fake it. Don't fake it, Francis. Come on. They're going to start pouring in the volleys. They can see a lot of French cav pushing up. And this is their chance. This is their chance. He's ordering the advance over a lot of dead cav and a lot of dead infantry. Seeing the, some cuirassiers, some Russian dead. And now is their chance... They have some Grenadiers with them from the 4th. Oh, wow, these are from the 4th Infantry as well. So they got several. Don't die now, Francis. They got some Cav backing them up. 
what do they got here? Some Chasseur Cheval, got artillery moving up as well. But they're going up against several Russian, and they actually are in danger. Francis is in danger. His regiment is going to get majorly flaked, as there's some light infantry here. And he doesn't... Now, mind you, you have no idea how the rest of the battle is going as a regiment. Can you imagine how terrible that would be? You have no idea if you're winning, if you're losing. You just know that you're winning on your side. And all of a sudden, out of the thicket, more Russian infantry appear. And he orders them, don't fall back, we must push on this side. If we can push, we can win. Oh, got a general who's just waltzing across. Napoleon himself. Napoleon himself encouraging them. Actually, shooting a couple of uh, Napoleon staff. They're probably traitors. No, I'm just kidding. Um, but Napoleon is way over here trying to inspire the men. And now they are advancing once again along the whole line. And it looks like Russia is actually starting to fall back. But they do have a lot of um, guard, elite guard units, so that's going to be something very tough that Francis is going to have to hold. And they definitely outclass, and he's starting to see a lot of infantry massing on his flank. But undaunted, he continues to order his men to fire. And they are pouring it in thick. He has not died. He's not wounded. He is ready to fight. Look at this. And he got some cab moving in the back. He got artillery now setting up right here. He has a chance to win this battle. It's going to sit right behind him. Actually, yeah. Looks like the guard's getting very close, which is very concerning. Like I said, he has the fl he has the flank of this army. The artillery is starting to blast some holes in this Russian line. Now they're exchanging shots with some of the elite Russian infantry. He's starting to pour some volleys in. He's starting to lose men. They are being outflanked on this side. Artillery, you can see, still punching holes. But some of the men are starting to drop in this front line as he yells encouragement to his men. Our men are running for. Then on the whole line, it is becoming a struggle. This tree hopefully gonna block some, but his men are starting to drop fast. He's now down to a hundred men. Artillery trying to do what they can. Francis is getting worried. I would be too, honestly. I mean, this is a lot. <gasps> and Francis just fell. That volley killed the colonel. You can see him laying here, dead. His men falling on top of him. Rip Francis. No. Let's see the other generals, look, other colonel's still alive. Yes, he is. And now he will be commanding both of these, as he's the colonel of the 4th E. And he tells them, stand your ground, we're not moving from this position. The flag bearer over here is telling the men, hey, I will, I will command for now. We can still do this. We can still push. Artillery is starting to punch some holes in this guard. But will it be enough, guys? Will it be enough? That's so sad Francis died. He was so young. Too young to die. And now his regiment is <laughs> down to 77 men. Flag bearer is determined not to uh, let his colonel die in vain. They must hold this line. As you see, a lot more Russian infantry getting holes blasted through them. And now they are starting to fall back a little bit. Perhaps they are going to hold their ground here. The 4E can hold their ground. Colonel over here is still holding strong. The entire unit is dead, sir. This unit is doing its colonel credit, even though Francis is dead.
pouring in the volleys, exchanging. They are outgunned, but they are now advancing. They must advance. Looks like there's some uh, infantry who are advancing way up here. They are determined to push. They have no idea how the rest of the battle is going. They're hoping the other side is going better than there, because right now they are at a dead lock. And this deadlock is not doing well for them. And they're going up against some really good Russian units. These poor men. At least they still have one colonel. Artillery is still trying to help soften up this attack. Sun ordered some cav and then some dragoons have also adv started advancing. We have some men who possibly are going to go for the Russian line. At the same time, these infantry from the 4E are advancing. It's do or die at this point. They've got even closer. Going to start pouring in the volleys on this Russian line, but these Russians have grit. More infantry now pushing in. Our men are running for... Unfortunately, it looks like this may be a break as now they have lost two line infantry that were ordered to do a bayonet charge hoping to break, but instead they are fleeing. And things are looking bleak for this French side as they are starting to get slaughtered. These men still with the banner, the flag bearer, are trying to hold, but they are, looks like some Russians are starting to push on their flank. At this point, they are wondering why they came, even came, to this battlefield. Why did they even push on Russia? Trying to do everything they can. Is the general, the colonel, still alive on this impetuous regiment? Yes, it is. For how much longer, though? I would not want to be an officer. I mean, they they get focused down so easily. And it actually looks like France is going to fall back. The, the flag bearer has dropped as well, unfortunately. We got some guard de corps now charging in. There are 65 men left of Francis's regiment. And the battle is beginning to look like a loss. Looking over here, it looks like maybe they're holding on this side. Maybe some chasseurs are going to help push on this flank of this guard, but... Things are looking pretty bleak at this point for Ney's men, as the narrator has just said. This regiment has not been focused as much. They still have their flag bearer and their colonel. They are falling back once again. And Francis' line infantry is getting very concerned. There's 62 men left. As they possibly are going to break soon. And now they are falling back across the road. Hopefully maybe going to this town. Nope, they're going to reform with the rest of Ney's... No, with the Chasseurs. Unfortunately, they know now that this is a losing battle for them. This line of infantry over here on this side. Oh my goodness, they suffered heavily. Way more than... They, they still have 108 out of 156. So now they are going to try to hold this colonel is yelling to both of these sides. This grenadier for the 4E. They still have their officer? Yes, they do. Two of the officers out of the three. They are still going to do all they can to hold. Walking over the dead Russians. And are going to continue to fall back. As this battle seems to be losing on this side. They don't know where the reinforcements are. Ney himself, as you can see, is trying to encourage his men. Where is Ney? The man who made all these mistakes. I think it's him right here. Yeah. He's right by. So these uh these men are going to try and hold as they have a general nearby to inspire them, but they are being outflanked. And they do not know what goes on the brow of this hill. They do not know what is happening 
All they know is all of the French allies are gone. There's one or two, looks like in a mosh of Russian infantry. And they are broken and running. So this is looking very grim for this impetuous regiment. Two regiments, four, like the 4E. Fourth infantry of the line. Grenadiers of the line. Infantry of the line. And now all they do is try to hold. There's 56. They've lost 100 men. They've lost about 40. Or 50, my bad. Somewhere around there. And uh, they're being shot to pieces now. Our men are running, sir. Little do they know, I'm going to give you a little sneak peek. But the battle appears to not be going very well for the French. <laughs> they are trying to hold. And unfortunately, the guard is showing up on the flank. See, I, even when I'm trying to do regiment, life of a regiment, I still can't help but try to narrate the whole battle. The roll of musket fire too much for this line of infantry, and now they are going to advance. Maybe try to engage the flank, help out. They've been ordered by Ney to advance towards the tree line over here as things are not looking very good for them. They're seeing a lot of random infantry running away. Empty horse, no rider, and they don't know where the Russians are that were in front of them. But they're going to advance anyway. And then they see him in the tree line. And they're getting shot to pieces once again. Outflanked, outmaneuvered. They're starting to see the roll of fire over here, and they're seeing what looks terrible. They've seen the Russians advancing, not falling back. This is not the plan. This colonel leaves a very, very... Uh, charming life. He obviously knows what to do, which is, I don't know, he can tell, share a secret. That's if he lives. He could, granted, he could still die. They're going to be pouring volleys trying to maybe do something to this Russian line that is starting to surround, looks like surround the French. Some cab going in on the side trying to punch a hole through the side, but they are going up against a lot of guard what can they do? There's a general in the back lines inspiring his men. They are not going to break. Of course, they have a general over here. Where is it? There he is. Nay, sitting right there. And Francis's regiment is starting to struggle here. They are starting to win a little bit. Now, the question is how long can they last before they become outnumbered? You can see the Russians way over here ignoring them, just pushing on the main battle line. You see some really good running, units, sir. some chasseurs running away. This regiment deserves a medal, guys. They deserve a medal. They have no officers left, and yet they are still conforming to this other unit doing their colonel who is dead proud. And there's not much you can really say here. Ah, oh, they should have held their ground. <coughs> colonel is still alive. Still fighting the good fight. Oh, man. This line is encouraged by the general, but there's only 50 of them left. 47 of them left, and this unit only has 100. And they're starting to drop like flies. There's still a drummer. Wow. Still a drummer. Our men are running, sir. 
He's like, hold. We do not give up. But then all of a sudden they hear a call for help from Grenadiers and their flake is being pushed. Now this colonel is realizing that things are becoming desperate. Some Grenadiers from the 4E are trying to hold this, the whole flank and holding well, as All you can see. Running, knocking down several of this guard unit. These Grenadiers don't go down easy. And then, of course, he orders this charge. Francis's friend, the Colonel, as he is aptly called, the Colonel, charges in. Of course, he's going to get charged in the flank by more guard. Where is the colonel? Where is he? Oh, come on. The flag bearer is down. Dang, I don't see him. Did he die? Oh, there he is. All men are running the colonel is ordering his men to fall back as he does not believe they can win this fight and now they are going to fall back. The question is, will he survive? Ordering his men back. The General Ney himself going in trying as a last just effort to save as many of his men as possible so they can fall back, reform in the Grand Armée. The question is, will these men be able to fall back? Will the Colonel survive? His friend Francis lays dead on the battlefield. The entire unit if if he can live, then he can tell the family how bravely he fought. But all seems lost. And so this battle is over. It's a sad day. The Russians have managed to hold their ground. And oh no, here comes some guard cap now to farm up some more kills. Yeah, I swear, if these guys kill the colonel, I'll keep my eye out, guys. And if there's any of the battles with the 4E impetuous, then I will totally do the life of a regiment again. If it's a Russian-French-themed battle, you know, keep up the story. But it looks like these Criassiers may be starting to slice these men to pieces. Does he make it out? Well, we'll find out in another video that we follow. Battlefield lost. I know Francis died over here somewhere. I think, he, I think he died right over here. Yeah, there he is. Did he succumb to his wounds, or was he instantly killed? We will never know. Or will we? Now, it was a fun battle either way, guys. Um, It was a good, good game by this, <laughs> the Russians and uh, French, so they did a good job. Colonel, I hope we'll survive. We will find out when we come back with a new regiment, Life of a Regiment. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did and you want to see more, let me know in the uh, comments or by liking it. And of course, watching it is kind of a good sign if people really like it. So, uh, hope you guys enjoyed. Like I said, stay safe and I will catch you all in another video.